Okay, that was 40. <laughs> that was supposed to be a razor blade landing on the air field. What I like to do next is I take the razor blade and just give them a bend. And uh, you can tell I use these razor blades all the time. You can tell by the uh, makeshift band-aid here, <laughs> installer's band-aid. And the reason I bend it is that it allows me to uh, run it flat. And I just go over and I feel the whole surface. And if there's any uh, paper like lifted up a little bit, I shave that off carefully. Try not to go through the entire surface down to the foam, of course. The edges are usually where you find the bad spots. You can see a few areas where the, the foam is showing through, <clears throat> but I brushed it with the, uh, with the glue first, at the edges, and that's where it's typically going to come through because you folded it over, you're going to have some edges. That's one of the reasons I make a lot of small slits in the paper uh, when I'm folding around so that these are um, as close as together as possible. It reduces the amount of places where they're going to stick up. Butter are because where you ended, where you wrapped around, there's going to be a little bit sticking out, but it's hard enough that you can just take your razor blade and just trim it right off. Just be careful you don't cut into your hinges. I don't worry about that too much on the length in the middle of any hinge. Unless it's really bad and really sticking up and hits when you, when you move it, I don't worry about it because you're not going to notice it unless it's really large. And it's definitely not going to affect strength. I've carefully hand sanded the entire surface and paying attention to where those ridges are. You could have just sanded those ridges off, but what has a tendency to happen is as you're trying to sand them down, you sand too much everywhere else because of the hardness of the glue and end up just shaving right through to the foam. You want to be very careful when you're, when you're sanding the edges because just like working with paint, if you've, ever, if you've ever done body work and had to sand down an area that was primed, you know that any kind of edge is going to sand through faster and because obviously because it's sticking up more. Now I'm taking a uh, glazing and spot putty and this is from an auto parts store. It's used on cars when you're uh, before you paint them actually either before you prime them or before you sand the priming layer uh, and sometimes after depends on, on how you like to use this, but what it is, it's a air drying putty basically that really needs to be in a very thin layer because when you're done sanding, you should not even really see it except in fine scratches. This is just for feeling fine scratches. So when I use it in this application, all I'm really doing is trying to get rid of the lines from the paper because you will see them even if you sanded it down, you'll, you'll see them. The advantage of this is that it's going to be uh, smoother and you're, it's only going to be where it needs to be so it's not going to add any additional weight. If you put it on too thick, you're going to have the same problem that you would have if you tried to sand down an edge. You're going to end up sanding on the sides of that edge more than you need to and you're going to sand through and have the foam showing. The way I use this, this glaze on, in this process is I'm not necessarily going to sand it all off. Uh, that's why, it's, again, it's even more important to put it on thin because I'm going to do you know, very little sanding after I put this on, just enough to, re to remove any edges that I happen to create. And you can see I'm trying to take off as much as possible again. And if you go on a straight line with the, with the paper edge you're trying to take off, your squeegee will sort of bend down into there and you'll still leave a little bit of an edge. So as I'm putting it on, the line would go like this. But I'm actually holding my squeegee on a little bit of an angle to that so that I sort of snow plow, if you will, some of the um, putty in against there, in against and sort of underneath that edge wherever there's really small undercuts. And that's going to add to the ability of that putty to blend in or feather in those edges. And because the putty is harder to sand once it's dry than the, the paper, that little edge of paper that's left will get sanded and feathered in a little more. Sometimes you have to change directions. 
as you do an area, you notice I didn't put a lot on because as you go, that's drying on here as well. And once it gets too dry to use, you have to scrape it off and, and not use it because it'll be hard to get it down in all the, the creases. I'm trying to go as fast as I can, at least when I'm not talking, because <laughs> I have a hard time talking and working at the same time as you might have, as you might have been able to tell from my videos. It does, it does take some concentration to do this uh, to do this right. And as you're gunning, you'll see when see how I scrape it down onto there. I'm doing two things. I'm getting the excess off of the squeegee that happens to be drying out a little bit maybe at the edges. And that also tests the dryness of it. When I put it on, I can see how dry it is. Uh, and it, it gives you a little bit of a, you know, a power of the stuff that you can scrape through instead of just, you know, continually taking it off the edge where you deplete it to the point where you're not getting enough on so that you can squeegee it all off. And you'll be able to tell right away when it's getting too dry because you'll push it down no matter how hard you push it, even in an area where there's not any lines, uh, it leaves too much. Scrape it all off, you'll see that uh, you'll know that you're doing it right because there won't be any very little on the surface, but the pits and holes and paper lines will be you know filled. And again, taking off as much as you can is only going to help the process and make it work better. If you used a uh, different kind of paper to get a certain effect, uh, say a comic books or you know whatever airplane magazines or whatever it happened to be, you obviously wouldn't use this because it's going to affect the color. Because you don't have to paint this. In fact, if you use the waterproof wood glue, you don't have to do anything to it. And you can actually get a very interesting look by just using the paper. It is going to get a little bit of yellowing from the glue. And you can use really any kind of printed paper you wanted as long as it had the right amount of porosity. That's, that's going to be the key. If the fibers are too dense, it's not going to absorb any of the glue. And the glue is not going to make the paper stronger because those fibers with the glue are actually a bit, big part of the strength. The glue alone uh, is not very strong and the paper alone isn't very strong, but it's just like fiberglass. The glue is flexible, but if you put fibers into it, it gets more rigid. It's actually the same as using fiberglass in that, in that respect. A couple of final thoughts about using the spot putty glaze in this technique. It's, again, it's really not necessary at all. It's not necessary. It's not going to add to strength. It's going to add a little bit of weight, very small amount. But if you use it correctly, you won't even be able to weigh that difference because you're scraping so much off, you're leaving really a fine amount, and then you sand it. The only reason I, I really did it on this plane was to demonstrate how you can get a nicer finish because I know a lot of guys are very particular about the way their planes look, including the paint. And I, I am a little too, I want it to look good and uh, the other thing about this is that you want to do this really fast. Besides the time when I was talking and trying to, you know, glaze it at the same time, the entire thing, this eight and a half foot wing, for me to do both sides the entire time was, you know, maybe seven minutes. You know, I'm working as fast as I can because it's easier to scrape more of it off if it is not drying.